All right, here we are again. Um, another great week of the show. Um, as y'all saw, first semifinal matchup it was announced the week before. It was going to be Akira and Bermudez uh, going into this fight. Team Mayhem, um, me personally, and just everyone, everyone around the show, I think, thought it it would and should be a pretty easy fight for Bermudez. Um, definitely one of the favorites on the show. Mayhem's first pick at 145. And just a dominating first round finish of uh, Stephen Bass in the, in, the, in the opening round in the house. Um, episode starts showing, I guess, TJ a little bit, still being all high and mighty. Um, whatever. Uh, he's, a t he's a talented fighter for sure. Um, maybe he deserves it. But it uh, goes in a little more into the, the pranks, and, and you see that a little bit more. Uh, Bisbing goes over the top. I laugh about it now. I was pretty upset at the situation when it happened, but watching it on uh, on TV was was pretty funny, I guess. Uh, the mariachi band taped it, uh, topped it off. So as you saw, they uh, got us in our room. Um, they ended up busting three holes through the wall between the, the two dressing rooms with uh, these pipe type things. They busted three holes and stuck fire extinguishers through them. Uh, started filling up the room, and like a dummy, we all started running for the opposite corner just to get away from it, I guess. Uh, Coach Danny Perez was probably the only smart one that kicked the door down right away and got outside. But as he opened the door, he saw that he was get, uh, waited there. Uh, waiting for him was Biz Bing with the fire extinguisher, and he got one right in the face. So um, The room gets super, I guess, you smoky or whatever, a fire extinguisher, super. I mean, you can't see anything. You certainly can't breathe. Um, Guys are getting sick. They're coughing up stuff. A cameraman is actually panicking at this time. Um, obviously, they don't show that. They don't want to show too much about the camera guys. Camera guy's panicking. He can't catch his breath. By the time he finally gets outside, he's throwing up in the grass. Uh, three or four guys are out there sick, throwing up. Uh, the little did show of me, you could probably tell that I was pretty pissed off. Uh, you know, I have the biggest fight of my life coming up. Uh, semifinals, about to go home. We're, we're, we're on our way you know, we're on the downside of this thing. Um, I don't want to be breathing that stuff in my lungs right before a fight. I have no idea what it is. Uh, they announced it's non-toxic, but I still don't think it's something good you want to be breathing right before a fight. So you could tell my uh, my anger, I guess, towards the situation. I wasn't happy about it, but again, it is what it is. It's funny, I guess. Uh, the mariachi band made it pretty comical. Uh, we come running out of a... a, a cloud filled room and, and there's a mariachi band sitting there playing waiting on us uh, a little icing on the cake I guess um, but as you as y'all witnessed to uh, who got the last laugh uh, you know their prank was good I guess but they definitely interrupted their training um, and actually interrupted ours later on that day that was the morning practice uh, we trained twice a day uh, they had to completely shut the gym down and bring in professional cleaners and stuff because that stuff got everywhere I mean it was covered the mats it made it all the way to the training center with the weights and the treadmills and, and even the bags way in the far back. Everything was just covered in this this debris from these fire extinguishers. So uh, definitely ruined some training. You know, they got, I don't know where their uh, mindset was. They probably, they probably didn't think it would be so bad. But uh, they got two guys, three guys in the semifinals that aren't training today because they decided to play their prank. So, eh, oh, whatever. They're going to do sprints, I guess. That's going to. Like I said, uh, that's not really going to help Akira stop a double leg, but whatever. Um, and it shows the house, and it shows uh, the three major clicks, clicks being formed. Uh, this has been going on the whole season pretty much, but they really highlighted it to this episode. Um, I told you in the beginning episodes that I got stuck upstairs with those guys. Well, I ended up moving downstairs into the smallest bedroom with three beds with uh, Dennis Bermudez and Dustin Pegg. Still two great friends of mine that I still talk to regularly. Um, very fortunate to get my living situation turned around. Our room was definitely the quietest, the darkest, the coldest. I mean, we had it, we had it made. And uh, I think maybe, maybe I respect, but they could tell that we were there not to party and not to, not to mess around. So we, for the most part, not, not the whole time, but for the most part, we got left alone a lot there and kind of forgotten about because there's only three of us, where the other two cliques were obviously a lot bigger. Um, the upstairs click. Death Leprechaun has now grown, as y'all see, um, the three little guys, and then Akira and Marcus and Diego and that whole click up there, and then what Lewis would refer to as the casino downstairs um, is Caraway and TJ, um, Siler, Nice, 
Prince, all those guys. So you definitely see the clicks. Um, again, I was fortunate to get with the, with the, my two friends that I connected with the best. Um, we just try to stay focused down there. Uh, we were all in the semifinals, so we were doing something right. Um, and it really gave me a gave me a chance to you know connect with some good people. And as y'all saw, we would do a Bible study down there, and and just really you know I grew in faith definitely while being on the show, just being surrounded by those guys. Uh, Dustin being a, a, a I mean, his fight name's The Disciple, and he's, he's all about, you know, spreading the word of God, which was just awesome to be around him. Um, and Dennis had a lot of questions, and, you know, I'm not the most knowledgeable guy, but I tried to help as much as I could, and, and you know, he's, he was reading the Bible with us, and it was, it was a cool experience. Um, then they show the fight. Obviously, what we're all waiting for, first semifinal matchup, again, Akira and Dennis. Um, I'm super confident going in this fight that Dennis is going to put a whooping on him. Um, and it doesn't quite turn out how I expect. Dennis um, seems to like going for the Superman punch a lot off this. He throws that right kick and then jumps into his right hand. Um, not something I use, but he's had success in the past, I guess, and he kept trying to go back to it. But he was getting tagged, man. He was getting, uh, he's getting hit with some big shots, and he's, he, he's taking a fight to the only place that Akira has a chance of winning that's knocking him out. Um, I wasn't impressed with Akira's stand-up against Nice, so I didn't think it would be any problem at all, but... He, he, he definitely uh, had me nervous and, and impressed me a little bit with it, with his striking and about had Dennis out two or three times. I mean, he landed some big shots and, and Dennis was trying to find his legs and it just kind of shows the grittiness and the toughness of Dennis by staying in that fight. Um, keep looking for that takedown, even though, you know, he was definitely rocked and hurt. Ends up getting the takedown, big slam, and Akira leaves his neck open. You know it was going to be one-sided once it hit the ground. Um, I had it more... My opinion was going to be it was more of a ground and pound, but he saw a, a pretty slick uh, gi team put on. Akira sitting against the fence. Um, mayhem, perfect coaching, sitting right in our corner, um, talking Diego or talking Dennis. I'm sorry, through it, and Dennis ends up getting the finish, uh, choking Akira completely unconscious. Akira has no idea what happened. He's trying to say he still wants to fight. I mean, we've been there. I've been I've been choked. You don't know what you don't, you don't know what happened. Um, I thought it was odd that he tapped before he went unconscious and then still tried to play like he didn't know what was going on. But whatever, man, it's a weird situation. You you, you know, you, you lose consciousness and you wake right back up and you're not sure what just happened. So it's understandable. But all in all, um, great episode. You know, I'm super pumped for my, my boy uh, Bermudez. Uh, moving on to the finals. First one uh, that y'all witnessed, obviously. Um, he did great. He Hopefully he can bring back the... Uh, 145-pound Tough 14 championship uh, here in December. Um, other than that, without saying results of the rest of the show, um, if you've watched the show in the past and followed the UFC, you know that um, not even even guys who lose at some point in the episodes, um, they come back and fight. So I've now been told that without saying any results of my fight with Dodson, that um, I am fighting December 3rd. I can't say if it's the undercard or if it's on spike or anything like that, but I can say I am fighting December 3rd. Um, can't give away any opponents, but training's going great. I'm doing two and three a days right now, so just training real hard, and uh, it's going good. Other than that, we had a uh, great week uh, at the gym here. Um, Evan Cuts went to, uh, went to Moline, Illinois and, brought, and, and fought Reagan Penn, which was just an awesome, awesome fight. Uh, if y'all witnessed it, watch out, ladies and gentlemen. That kid's the future, man. He's only 20 years old, took that fight on 12 days' notice, and went in there and just wrecked shop on uh, BJ Penn's younger brother. So it was a big day for us and a big day for the gym, and we're just super excited about his future. So, again, thanks for all the support. Uh, stay tuned, and I'll see y'all soon. Thanks.